we're using journey management to think more holistically and manage distributed ownership. So we're doing big things with very little and silos are the number one enemy to doing this important work. What's the experience for a customer? What's that value? What's the metrics around it? And ultimately, what's the business impact? We want to launch with an MLE, which is like a minimum lovable experience. Here's the things that we're, we're moving toward and using that visual as, as a key uh, str strategical document. Thanks so much for coming after a long, hard uh, day at work. Really appreciate you all being here. I know people are coming from different places. We have our harmonic studio folks joining us from different parts of the country. So really happy to have you all here. Uh, this is our practice week. And we have been exploring a lot of different topics. And uh, one of them happens to be product management and journey management and kind of the interaction between them and how they uh, you know, go along or conflict with uh, each other and how we can find some affinities with service design. So uh, again, uh, you know, we're really excited that we're able to bring all of this uh, you know, learning in front of you today. And uh, thanks to our panelists uh, for joining us. We're glad that we're able to really get uh, you know, some real life experiences from you all. So to frame up our conversation a little bit and kick us off, I want to share a couple observations that we've had uh, around the fields of journey management, product design, and service design. Some of the things they all have in common, but are kind of different in nuanced ways as well. Um, so just want to share a couple of our findings. Uh, so one is that all of these disciplines tend to function around some type of end-end -end timeline. Uh, from a journey management point of view, that could be end-to-end -end customer experiences that are the focus, whereas product management might focus on something more like a product value stream. And then in service design, we'll even zoom out a little bit further and look at end-to-end uh, -end multi-actor experiences. So some of the perspectives, just taking a little bit of a different nuance to each of them. Similarly, uh, we think all of these different disciplines champion customer centricity just a bit different how that came about. So journey management is uh, very much stemming from that mindset, uh, coming up in a lot of CX departments, for example. Uh, service design as well uh, does uh, believe in customer centricity, but also employees and other actors and partners, so kind of zooming that ecosystem out a little bit. And uh, it's, you know, product management historically came from a place of being a little more business focused, but it's been something that has been more and more uh, center to that field as, uh, as it's evolved. So all of these fields connect to design research in one way or another. Um, with service design, uh, we're looking real, to get a really in-depth look and understanding of each of those different actors that we're looking at the experiences around. Uh, journey management might be a little bit more focused on measurement of current state, uh, things like that, whereas product uh, is often looking at design research in terms of testing things that are going out to market. Um, one of the key skills that I think goes across all of these fields is the ability to zoom in and out. Um, it's just the kind of the levels of zoom we look at and the frames that we're zooming in and out of that differ. So for um, for Journey management, there's kind of a very high level framework journey that you know we can look at and then zoom into micro journeys underneath that um, and get into more and more detail. Uh, whereas service design, we might be looking at an ecosystem or a different kind of structure at the highest level view. But again, zooming into things like capabilities, for example, and product management, taking that even a step further and, and diving into technical requirements and uh, things that get very detailed. So it's just the levels and the frames that differ, even though we're all kind of practicing the same field there. And finally, um, each of these fields stem from and connect to business goals and are motivated uh, at the highest level by what is driving the business or the organization uh, that, that they're within. Um, with some of these fields, it's more about using those goals strategically and connecting it to the work uh, with things like journey management. We're also measuring uh, the success and, and what is out there in the world and how, is, how are those goals being accomplished. 
So um, these are just a couple little observations that we've had as we've been working with clients and discussing these topics uh, together in our practice. And um, wanted to just share that with you all before we dive in with our experts here. Um, and a couple themes that we might get to in our conversation tonight. Um, so I want to ask, you know, how can these three evolving fields partner for shared success? Or can they? Are they natural allies or not? Uh, do service design, church management, and product management complement each other or conflict? In a time of major changes and reorgs are commonplace across industries, uh, how does the structure of an organization affect the ability for journey management or product management or service design even to have influence and to, um, to function well within an organization? And then hopefully we'll also dig a little bit into what does the future look like for these disciplines? Where are, they, where are these fields going? Well, let's get started with you, Florangan. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, you, you spoke a little bit about like what you're doing with journey management and where, you know, your role kind of fits in. Uh, I know you've had a lot of experience doing journey management in your previous job as well. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about like how your role kind of differed there and where journey management kind of sits in your company right now? Yeah, where it sits in the company right now is really exciting because we have, we are in the digital experiences and customer empowerment group that's for Bitball. And we decided a year ago to really partner with our friends in the customer success organization mm -hmm. to stand up a cross-functional journey management group. So we're, we're building that practice already cross-functional and you get all these different stakeholders in there from customer experience professionals to experience designers as they call them over there mm -hmm. to service designers in our group to product um, experts in our group so it's very interesting and maria did the did the maria did the, the intro there and sort of the separating trying to separate the different groups and in, in my world uh journey management is sort of the big uniter really that brings everybody together Mm -hmm. Everybody is gyrating, gyrating around similar kind of thoughts, similar kind of innovations, um, a shared tech stack and all that stuff. And we're using journey management to think more holistically and manage distributed ownership, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been added, yeah, I joined a year ago, pretty much exactly. It's been a totally wild ride to get the journey management practice stood up in such a short amount of time. We couldn't have done it without the cross-functional um, partnership to get that firepower early on and get some leadership that really trusted us to say, okay, we're going to run this as a pilot. Let's see what we can get out of it. And now we have some really strong, we call them hero journeys, that really uh, illustrate that cross-functional way of working. And then we have our separate journeys that, that we're working on. But that's, that's where we are today. And um, the interesting thing is sort of, from a team design perspective, we can get into that a little bit later. I'm thinking a lot about like, okay, is it a journey manager, is it a service designer, and where we're landing with most of the team members that we're asking them to do both, do the service design. So be sort of the, 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 the hunter, the discoverer, the connector, and then also be the farmer and have the discipline to bring the information into one shared platform. We're using a purpose-made platform for that. Without that, it wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really the both sides of the brain that we're asking people to do. Well, you asked about my role. Um, I am a joke. I'm at two hundred foot level, building a little sample journey to to get people going, and then at the two hundred foot, two hundred thousand foot level up there, we're really talking to executive leadership and everywhere in between. I'm, there's extra zeros in here, so a lot of like context switching, a lot of altitude switching, to selling in the idea, proving the idea educating all of that yeah yeah i know uh, lola you're doing something similar on uh, your end being a service designer kind of trying to fit in journey management as well do you want to talk a little bit about like what florian just said has your experience been similar different in any way yeah so at amtrak we're really at the beginning of our service design journey i'm actually amtrak's first full-time service designer so journey management is something that we're actively working on defining and implementing at the enterprise level. So today we might be doing a little bit of journey mapping in pockets here and there, sort of point in time, find and fix mapping, which definitely does provide value. But 
we know that that value greatly increases when we have that overarching framework and can optimize journeys over time and include them as part of that ongoing strategic decision making and prioritization processes. So I do not sit in CX, I sit on an innovation team, which is part of digital technology. And that is kind of an advantage in this situation because the innovation team can come in and bring value. We do have a sort of freedom to experiment with new tools and methodologies. So we can conduct proof of concepts, test out tools and governance models so that when people are ready and we try to meet people where they are and when they're fully aligned to adopt journey management, we'll be able, able to hand over some well-researched requirements, governance models and best practices to sort of get us off and running. Well, okay. Uh, do you all work with journeys? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so interesting enough, right? Um, I think when I actually mentioned that, right, in one of the slides, it says, hey, you know, uh, products typically and uh, think about business outcomes and not so much on customers, right? Mm -hmm. um, a traditional product centric organization, that's typically how it works, right? Because product managers are like, oh, technically savvy in most cases and they go right into the how and it's like oh we can do it just because we can yeah. right build it and they would come right mm -hmm. and so the shift is slowly happening towards the customer focus and one of the first things that we did when we were asked to do mobile was exactly that right so our traditional products if you look at it you got broadband you got video you got voice you know things have been there for a long time and mobile as an example has been there for a while too right so for us, as a, as a broadband company, when we made the decision to move into the mobile space, they asked us and they said, this was right when the pandemic happened, right? March, 2020, they gave us the approval and they said, go ahead, get this, build a new line of business and do it in 16 months, right? And they said, okay, great. A, a blank sheet of paper, right? And we started moving on that. What we did was that's when we made the pivot and said, okay, you know what? We can, we can build it, we can look at ways to do this, but let's do it right. Let's make sure we have the right experience uh, mm -hmm. you know, for our customers. So started the whole journey mapping. In fact, Harmonic was part of that uh, journey with us. And we went through uh, you know, looking at all the customer journey, right? How do you become a customer? I mean, think about it. All of us have cell phones here. So we have interacted with a wireless carrier in our lives, right? So we know what works, what doesn't, what pisses us off, right? So we wanted to make sure that we go through all of that and said, Think about what it takes to become a customer, what it takes to manage your account, how do you pay your bills, how do you solve issues, uh, how do you disconnect, right? So we looked at all those journeys, blueprinting, wireframes, and then help, you know, that helped shape what the design should be. And so it was a completely design-driven approach for us to build this, right? So proud to say that we became one of those uh, divisions within Cox that actually moved to a more customer-centric uh, mm -hmm. approach that helped us in, hey, look at the right tools that we need to have, look at the um, discipline that we need to have, right? We've always been a uh, kind of a waterfall, you know, uh, de development um, shop. This helped us completely, you know, have the mindset to say, go agile, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to like, think of what works, go ahead, get it done, see if it works, if it doesn't move forward. So, Having that journey really helped us understanding kind of the moments of delight and the points of friction and figure out the best way to handle that. Right. So I, I you know, there are some folks here who work with us together and we talk about this, right? When we launched, we we did not stand up and say, hey, we've got an MVP, right? MVP is like minimum viable product, right? We said we want to launch with an MLE, which is like a minimum lovable experience, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what we went for. And we're pretty happy two years into it. We got close to 200,000 subs and we're growing. So it's good. Yeah, yeah. so what's the current state of journeys at Fox? The, the, the interesting part is because <laughs> mobile deployed it, right? So um, you actually caught us in the right time. The Cox is actually going through uh, an organizational change right now as we speak, right? And one of those things is to start um, aligning yourself to customer segments, right? So we've been all over the place. And now you've got somebody, the, there's a leader focused on all residential, there's a leader focused on commercial. Mm -hmm. And within the residential uh, organization, you've got customer experience, you've got product, you've got sales, you've got marketing, you've got service, everything under kind of one leader, right? Mm -hmm. So journey and experience become a lot more important as we move forward. Well, uh, moving on to Richard, because 
you know, uh, talking about telecommunications, uh, Richard, is that what you're seeing on your side of the world uh, at British Telecom or how, how are you all thinking about, um, you know, journey management kind of blending in with the way VD works right now? Yeah, I think probably from our conversations because around um, how service design, I would say, is maturing and the idea that journey management is a piece of that to operationalize what we've been doing for quite a long time is something which I'm seeing here in Europe a lot, lot more, is that um, we've always talked about the idea that blueprints and journeys probably get get built or, or they get designed and created, but then the at that point they're kind of finished, but they're not. They're the, they're the operational gold dust of like how you keep iterating, how that keeps working, how the organization keeps keeps working. So yeah, that's the way I'm, as I said before, probably like Lola, we're probably like looking at how that, that works. Not probably nowhere as near what you're doing, Florian, you know, like the experience you've had, but it's something which is, I think, I think a lot of different companies are waking up to is that a lot of this work can be operationalized and be used to um, measure, build, and kind of like go back to the business with that value, that experience value of what's the experience for a customer, what's that value, what's the metrics around it, and ultimately what's the business impact around that as well. So, uh, Jason, do you have anything to add from your experience so far? Any uh, comments? that was just said yeah i mean i, I agree i think um you know especially with with rk about um business uh you know product has been traditionally business focused um and we are seeing a, a switch or th there is a transformation to being more customer led um i think w with the companies that i work with and what we like to do, we don't, they're not, there's a lot of service designers on the, on those teams, um, but not really the journey management, uh, I guess, title or, or, um, or group, but I think in, in general, from a, from a learning onboarding perspective, from an understanding that visual map of how uh, a, a customer or a user's complete a task, they go from point A to point B, where, how are they feeling between those points, understanding the gaps um, and understanding areas that we can focus on to um, improve impact, improve value. Um, to what Richard was saying, it's an ongoing, it's a never, you know, you have to always refine it. Um, what are, you know, what are we doing to um, understand if, if say, hey, we're trying to solve for churn here um, because on the journey map, it, it, it shows that we're seeing uh, you know, um, some dis dissatisfaction, how are we tracking that? And then when we come back around, how are we measuring that through the map and how are we um, uh, then uh, really uh, creating that narrative within the company around here's the things that we're, we're moving toward and using that visual as, as a key uh, str strategical document. Thanks for sharing that, Jason. Uh, so something that I found common between all of what you all said was this piece about customer centricity and trying to deliver value to the customer. So what would you say from your experience, and again, anyone can go first, um, what are some of the biggest challenges you all have seen as you're trying to deliver value from your own perspectives, right? As product managers, as jury managers, like what are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing right now? Uh, I'll, I'll start, right? Maybe if you think about it, um, the biggest challenge I would say is making sure that you understand the need, right? Because I'll go back to what I said earlier. Product, it's been traditionally, hey, yeah, let's go ahead, do something, let's build it up, and then we'll figure out and we can sell it to customers, right? If you're not solving a problem or just identifying that need early on, you're going to run into problems way later, right? So that's kind of where I think, uh, you know, a good partnership with, uh, you know, voice of the customer, we're working with the marketing, like the consumer insights team, you know, understanding what, what some of those challenges are, right? And as they go through the design, I'm sorry, the, the research, I mean, you hear stuff, right? And then Jason just mentioned, like, you know, metrics, right? So sometimes we we tend to like look at certain things and say, okay, well, we heard this, there is, there is this need, but 
is it is it a big need i mean is is it like i mean i the team here would vote for that right we always go back to asking the why right you you should ask the why 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 should we do this why why is it important why is it important now right so again looking at all that and then figuring out what's the best way to then tackle that need right so that challenge is the one if you're able to overcome um you would be then uh, be able to design based off of that and then eventually you know build the right experience for the customer you agree uh, disagree you're facing similar different challenges anyone i think that's the ongoing thing that's a definite one around always finding out what the right problem is to solve for and what those needs are i think to kind of add some other things to it i think especially with journey management and some people have kind of thought about it a little bit is that you've got to get a shared frame of reference which is quite a hard thing to do depending on the size of organization that you have and depends on whether you're if it's going to be product centric kind of like all that kind of area or is it going to be customer segment you know specific how are you going to frame things as an organization that has to come through another challenge i think that comes through is as well we've talked a bit a little bit about it is probably roles and responsibilities change and how that works within different teams and how that collaboration is going to work because yes we have agile we have different all sorts of different types of practices we have to get those bits right and everyone needs to kind of know how they're going to work together and it, and you've got to have a probably Florian could probably explain a little bit more in the practice you've got to kind of start things off with guardrails as you start you start things off and then you can open up more where people can be more kind of self autonomous as well so those are probably a couple of things other things that i've seen as well as big challenges yeah so Florian, a question for you on that uh how do you see yourself as a journey manager on the or you can go ahead uh, and answer that as well partnering with someone like rk to work together yeah, I mean, I think so, so for us to I want to answer the challenge question for a second because I've been sitting yeah. here pondering. Yeah. Um, so, so for us, it's it's the relevant end-to-end -end experiences, yeah. right, and not necessarily consistent all the time. But where are you in the journey, and what do you need? Which channel do you need from the traditional service that's right? Mm -hmm. And then we're doing this at the same time, um, front to back. So we are thinking about the customer experience, the user experience, the employee experience, the go-to-market strategy. We're doing that sort of vertical integration there. And then the other axis that we think a lot about it, and that's really challenging, is sort of how do we experiment around the experiences that we deliver today to perhaps support a business transformation, but bring in experimentation there, bring in at the very least A-B testing, but multivariate mm -hmm. testing, and how do we move up service experiments to service prototype even before we create code, even Future flex and it's all very advanced, and we can do a lot of in field experimentation. But how do we do even earlier experimentation? We're spending a lot of time at the time axis right there, and then the other challenge is sort of sort of draw out the time axis over time. So, I'm I am um, proposing and driving uh change from current state journeys to future state journeys. That's good to get started, but really, where we want to be is in the space of evolution journeys and have the journey have the journey as it is today in that same artifact as we think about it tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So Autodesk has a 150 people strong research team that is really focused on futures reports and future study. There's really good stuff coming out of that. How do we bring that in for, for sort of daily decision making today or tomorrow in strategic planning? And then how do we, more, more near term, how do we take the stuff that comes out of a full story that comes out of the various source of customer um, instrumentation that we have and make these smaller incremental changes. So my biggest challenge is that orchestrating the time axis. We have clarity around it, but then doing it with rigor, doing it on a consistent basis over time, that's where we're spending a lot of time. And then this notion of sort of strong guardrails, right? Mm -hmm. Richard was saying just a second ago, and we're trying to move trying to remove guardrails and put bumpers in where it's just like mm -hmm. <laughs> Directional guidance, not like <laughs> strong. Um, uh, and we're spending, a, Hayden and so my team is sitting here, we're doing a lot of like enablement and internal training to get people acting and thinking like service designers, like journey managers. I don't think I answered your question. Okay. I have, 
follow-up questions for you. So how do you think that, actually I have two questions, but I don't know which one I should ask first. Just... <laughs> 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 okay. uh, so how uh, how does your role or your background as a service designer has kind of helped you in your role as a journey manager or kind of, you know, being uh, someone who transitioned into journey management? I think standing up a practice like this, you have to be comfortable with um, the fuzzy front end. You mm -hmm. have to be comfortable knowing, being aware that I, today I know five or ten percent of the entire ecosystem that I'm seeking to influence, and I'm starting to create change there. And then it's a continuous discovery process, and the so the concentric circles get wider and wider. So for, for me personally, that's the, the being being comfortable. With that ambiguity at the beginning, that has helped me a lot. Managing this complexity, it also and every now and then makes it so wake up for him. So that's that. <laughs> Lola, are you seeing something similar? I know you have a background in service design as well. Is is your has your journey towards journey management have <laughs> been the same? Uh, I want to talk a little bit about circling back about the challenges that we're facing. Um, I think our biggest challenge is our historic lack of funding, the complexity of the environment and the siloed nature of our organization. I haven't heard a lot of talk about silos so far. Um, I think that's a big one that probably a lot of people can relate to. So we operate in a unique, complex and a highly regulated environment. And we serve the entire American public from business people who commute every day on the Northeast corridor to grandma and grandpa who are going on that once in a lifetime long distance trip. And it takes a massive amount of coordination and collaboration just to make the railroad run. So we've been largely focusing on moving steel. And now we're shifting into that mindset of moving people. And we hope to further shift that mindset into connecting communities at large. And that is kind of to your um, other question. That's where service design thinking has really come into play and helped us make that cultural change. So we're doing big things with very little and silos are the number one enemy to doing this important work. And anytime we're making meaningful changes to our services, we're working with large multi-department cross-functional teams and also working against 50 years of inertia and technical debt. So the better we're working together and the more in lockstep we are, the better that customer and employee experience will be. So service design and then also journey management are super great at being silo busters. Jason, moving on to you, have you had, like you have, you talk about your background being in human-centered design and, you know, you do come from a product world. How has that kind of shaped for you? Like, how does it, you know? Um... Yeah, you know, it's, um, when I first started looking at the, the customer, like I was at a startup and, it was that we we're just building stuff, building really cool things that no one knew how to use. And it was really neat tech. And um, but we weren't getting any usage out of it. And so I started just digging into the metrics. This was many, 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 many years ago. And that was sort of like the beginning of how do we connect what we're building intuitively to the value stream back out to our users and our customers? How do we get a user to be a customer, A, and what are those touch points along the way that gets them into being engaged? Um, it's been a long road to get to this point where product is today, where we're seeing a, more an empathetic version of product, um, I would say. Um, and that, um, I think our struggles right now are really creating teams to work in the open. They're, you know, um, Lola talks about the silos and teams have a tendency to go down a path and not bring anyone else in. And, um, you know, forming teams and part of that product process that I talk about is how do we form teams with the right amount of overlap between the teams that creates conversation and then how do you layer that with um, right now, uh, like a shared service of uh, of service design that can sit over the top of that, the entirety. And so, you know, it's it's sort of driving that need. Hey, I, let, let's go back and let's look at that. Let's look at the service design. Let's look at that blue, 
blueprint and and check it out. Let's let's understand what we're doing. Oh, hey, we need to talk to this team now. So there's there's a lot of I find those of being a bigger struggles is um not going tech first and really, you know, solving that why. Um and and not only just the why, but what's the value proposition for it and um what's the impact and how are we going to measure the lift and and creating an accountable team that's responsible for all those metrics and for everything. So from the service design to product to engineer to sales and marketing, everyone's aligned with what we're after and what bets we're making. Mm -hmm. And then it's how are we tracking it? So it's creating that alignment and that accountability within the team um, to really um, respectfully uh, um, you know, include and be inclusive with everyone's roles on the team itself. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Richard. Just want I wanted to add to it because I think there's an, there's an, there's an underlying theme that comes from this. This is about information sharing and how we use information, and journey management is an element to do that. And I think this idea of how how we share our metrics, how do you share what's going on, how does that work ongoing? Keep keep iterating and keep how does that shit that knowledge sharing keep working? It's not about silo busting as well. It's like where is that that coming from? It's things like I know the UK government in the gov.uk and UK government have always been quite good at well, the whole kind of government's kind of got a practice now of weak notes and sharing what they're doing and being more in the open. That's one element to it. Journey management is like another element to that as well of that's ongoing kind of like how things how things are going so i think it's there is a theme around how our organizations work that need to be quicker and sharing information in a different more kind of social network kind of way it was just something i was thinking about before this as well so but it seems to be coming out yeah so i would just add one thing right so yeah. i totally agree with the siloed approach and you know information sharing um one of the, the, the good things about product is kind of product sits in the middle, right? So when people say, hey, you know, how do you describe product? What, what the heck do you do, right? Mm -hmm. So we always say that, and people probably would have heard of like the hub and spoke model, right? So product sits in the middle being a hub of a wheel and various spokes are the, the different uh, body partners, right? So our job is to kind of keep things, you know, uh, controlled and make sure that the wheel's running in the right direction, right? So that is uh, possible only if, you know, one, again, I go back to the alignment on the why, right? Mm -hmm. And then the uh, information share, right? So this is this is the beauty of when we get into it and we get aligned on the why and we start going through, hey, what is it that we want to do and how do we do it? We are very clear on communicating this, getting input from all the boundary partners, right? Sales, marketing, care, field, legal, regulatory, you know, HR. I mean, think of all these groups. You, you bring it all together and the journey really helps bring bring that to life, right? Mm -hmm. So when you start looking at that and say, oh, I see this is happening, like why? And then, you know, as we start thinking through it, it's like, okay, that makes perfect sense. This, we need to make sure that this gets addressed and, you know, product being able to orchestrate all that is beneficial. Mm -hmm. The information sharing, um, <clears throat> break it down the silos through information sharing, one thing, right? Absolutely, 100%. I also want to highlight where and how we share information. Um, yes, for us, the journeys are the pieces that bring everything together. But for us, it's about real-time information, connecting real-time information on the back of the journey. So having the inside repository over here and doing some of the analysis and the grouping of the insights in that repository. And for some business stakeholders, they may just want to look at a key insight mm -hmm. and the supporting five pieces of evidence. And that's all they need to do. They never need to head over to the journey, right? But that same insight is connected to the journey. That same insight is connected to resulting innovation opportunity. That same of that opportunity is connected to pieces on the roadmap, right? So having that, what I call the through line and having, again, discipline around creating that through line, that's the superpower of journey management. With the sort of interesting byproduct that less people perhaps need to look at the journey as a whole because they can trust 
that the piece of information is actually connected to the journey and that there is sort of this interesting combination of holistic and specific thinking and holistic and specific connectivity between the different pieces of information. And um, we we are, in, our culture is a very uh, investigative, interrogative culture maybe, mm -hmm. where people are presenting for 10, 20 minutes and then it's 40 minutes of in-depth critical thinking Q&A, which is really awesome. And we are able to point more and more often to these connected artifacts in the journeys to help answer these questions. And then we're asking the collaborators to, sometimes these sessions can turn into like this big brain pool of conversation and nothing ever gets captured. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process of turning the conversation to the artifact level in the journey management framework that we have. So the conversation happens there and the critical thinking happens there. So in your role, Florian, then, who do you think is like one of the most important, let's say, functions or people to partner with to get your product? There you go. <laughs> that answers the question that you asked before. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you say, sir? Do you want to uh, tell me a little bit about that? Well, I think as a, as a service designer, we're, we're, we're as service designers and journey managers, ultimately we're in the business of getting the right information to the right people at the right time, right? And connecting the right information. And then the product is there to package it all up to make it all happen and bring it to reality. And that's where, I'm mean, this is tongue in cheek, but I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm serious. And, and with modern product management approaches, like the product operator model, you want to bring more and more information to the frontline designers, to the empowered frontline engineers to make those decisions where they really matter. And we don't even want to make those decisions necessarily for them. We just want to provide an ecosystem of information mm -hmm. so that these empowered teams can make the decision and then sort of collaborate with us and bring back, okay, what did, what was the decision that we made in the sprint? Great, okay, let's go. Um, so that connectivity for us. Right. And so question for uh, you, RK and Jason, what is one thing you all think that journey managers or you know the practice of journey management can borrow from uh, product management? What's one thing, what's one skill, what's one, you know, could be a uh, capability that you have, a anything, if you were to give an advice to them, like, hey, we're doing this one. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say, sorry, Jason, um, I, I wouldn't say this is um, uh, an advice or anything, but at the same time, I mean, he said, you know, partnership, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the first things, you know, is like complete open mind, right? Because that that is where a lot of us kind of fall behind because people come in with such a narrow focus, it's like going back to the silos, if you're responsible for a function, mm -hmm. I mean, you're thinking just purely of that function, function, right? And with product, because you're able to collaborate, you're able to kind of, you know, figure out a way to you know, delineate and say, hey, think a little bit broader, right? So having the engagement with uh, the journey manager, they, they should be able to help uh, balance out the, uh, the kind of that, technical aspects to the customer need, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, even though product is slowly moving to the customer um, first approach, I mean, this is years and years of traditional product where you know, you're building stuff just because you can. Um, so uh, partnering early on to make sure, hey, open the aperture a little bit, think more broader, think, keep your mind open to uh, looking at the experience and then be okay with certain things not being the way it is and ensuring that you're communicating that properly. Jason, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I th I think uh, you you um, spot on. I think it's it's from a product perspective, and um, we need to be more or less, or the team in general needs to be in love with the problem, not the solution, and um, we have to allow the folks who are doing the how, who have the understanding uh, to, to guide that solution to an elegant way to please customers. So it's it's one of those, I think that partnership, um, it doesn't work without partnership and collaboration. Thank you, Jason. Uh, I do have a question around, you, you spoke a little bit about this earlier, RK, but I'm gonna start with Lola and kind of go on to this topic of uh, success. Um, you know, a lot of times like product management is more about like product success and like meeting the business goals and yeah. of course, customer experience and, you know, uh, metrics that are measuring that are important. But of course, you know, it's it's business first, right? 
So Lola, in your experience with, you know, working in this role, uh, what, what do you think are the most important success metrics in your role as a journey manager? So uh, as a member of an innovation team, I might take this question in a bit of a different direction. I want to think about it in the context of a far future journey. So I think about success and effectiveness in a couple of different ways when we're talking about getting stakeholder buy-in and having these future journeys really resonate with folks. So I'm thinking about, does this connect to the right long-term horizon business goals? Uh, this could be something like a long-term sustainability goal, an accessibility goal, goal around a new service line that doesn't exist right now, or is this something that we need to create, which is often the case. Um, do the people that we're working with align around it and actually believe that this is a possible future? Or was this just a fun and inspiring exercise or maybe at worst a distraction? <laughs> um, and also does it inspire internal decision makers to invest in the tools and the products and the solutions today that are gonna bring us towards that future um, and consider the dependencies that we've identified? Richard, is that, has that been the same for you? I know when we spoke earlier, uh, it was a little bit of a different, uh, you know, approach to journey management at, at BT, but would you agree with what Lola said? I would, I, I, I would, I would agree with that. I think there's some extra kind of pieces to it. I think there's always the, the strategic kind of like, this is strategic aims or the values that the, the business is trying, the, the brand kind of values that are trying to come through because those, it's usually maybe three or three to five things that they're wanting to kind of like bring out. I know a lot of us talk about personalization, but it's like, okay, about care or trust and how you bring those out and how you create experience metrics for those is it's something which is quite new. I think that's at a really high level, I think. But if we're thinking about how this works with product teams now, I think there's elements of, of exp I've experimented with probably if people have heard of Kate Tarling's work in, in the UK, but this idea of effectiveness and efficiency and how a lot of the times we're thinking about efficiency as a business, but actually the fact, the effectiveness for a customer, do they actually complete the task that they need to do? Do they complete the goal they're trying to do? So are they trying, are they getting connected with their broadband? Usually the way our journeys work in businesses is it might be they buy, they, 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 you know, they, 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 they onboard and then they, 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 they start to use it. It can be broken up a bit, a bit too much. I, I almost think sometimes it can be broken up too much, whereas actually it should be a customer's trying to get to a goal. They're trying to get connected with broadband or trying to get their mobile phone connected. That's the journey and whether that's effective or not, how that has that happened. It's quite a simple metric. But do we measure it? Probably, there's probably a, a load of data around it, but probably potentially not. So it's those kinds of, I think we're, probably a lot of us are still experimenting around that when we're, when we're looking at journey management and trying to figure out what those potential metrics are at those different levels. Because we haven't talked about hierarchy yet of journeys as well. So micro, macro, and then life cycle as well. So... I see Florian's laughing. <laughs> Took a week on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it next time. I know I'm getting signals that we are kind of coming up on our uh, moderator uh, questions, but just one last question for everyone. So whoever wants to jump in, um, kind of just like talking about a little bit uh, in the future. So what do you think, uh, in your opinion, is the future of your disciplines or practices? And how do you see the other person? So in this case, like for you, RK, journey management, uh, being a part of that future and service design. Yeah. Um, so I would say, I mean, based on the, uh, I mentioned this earlier, right? Because it's going through kind of a transformation, right? Mm -hmm. And that's to kind of organize yourself again, um, as uh, against customer segments. And that becomes critical, right? So now you've got, all of these folks kind of working together to make magic, right? So, um, so for me, I mean, that is going to be important that we we continue doing that, right? Because it's not a once and done thing, right? You think about a cable company. I mean, I don't know for folks here whether it is Comcast, Charter, whoever you use, right? 
I don't know how many of you would raise your hand and say, oh man, I love my cable company. <laughs> uh, very, very few. Right? So, and I work for one. Right? So, and then this is, this is exactly what we go through. The customers have had, I mean, they have service from us, but they just don't want to interact with us. Right? So uh, we are not a Facebook or a TikTok. I mean, we are like, hey, you know, buy it, shut it, forget it type thing. Right? So stuff has to work. It has to work very well, and don't you should not get them to call us, right? Mm -hmm. So, having that uh, the discipline of hey, you know, let's focus on customer experience, let's focus on customer satisfaction, uh, make sure that you know you you do it, do it right, and then hopefully forget about it that customers are enjoying it and don't have to get bothered or you be bothered by them, right? So that is you know that it it takes some time, and getting this organized that way actually would help, I believe. Okay. Anyone else? Your question was about sort of the future of the disciplines. So I think, you know, and this is kind of what this whole panel is about, but our challenge now and what we're contending with in my context is how do service design, and product management workflows best intersect and support each other? And the question was posed at the very beginning, is this something that's possible? <laughs> and I definitely think that it is possible and necessary. And I think that in the future, product managers are going to engage more and more in the practice of service design. I think your service design is a practice that anyone can engage in. And I also hope to see journey management expand beyond really just the customer focus and bridge to include employees as well, potentially even moving outside of CX and into other parts of the org. Um, we have a temporary home for it right now in an innovation team, but I think that there's a lot of opportunity for journey management to have tendrils across different elements of the enterprise. Absolutely, totally agree with you there, Lola. And service design definitely offers a lot there as well, looking at you know, multiple actors and their experiences as well. So uh, I do... Yeah, just, uh, just a very quick one. Yeah. I think uh, we're at this moment where <clears throat> journey management is maturing in recognition and in consistency of approach. And my hope is that the business community will recognize journey management as it has UX design with the consistency of knowing pretty much what the inputs are into it and what the outputs are to expect from it. much. I do have a bonus round for you. <laughs> so we're going to do a little rapid fire here and I'm going to ask every, I'm going to go one by one, ask you uh, three or four questions and uh, you have to say whatever comes to your mind. So no long answers, very short, to the point, uh, and we're going to do it really fast so that we can all wrap it up nicely. So Let me get the drink. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll start with you, Argus. Oh. All right. So, okay, let's uh, let's start here. So, uh, what's the one thing you wish you could automate in your job? Oh, automate in my job. Um, yikes. Uh, re requirements gathering. Okay, awesome. Uh, what is a buzzword in your job that you think is really overhyped? Uh, know it all. Uh, if your job was a movie. Which movie would it be? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Mission Impossible. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. No, but that's a good one. I mean, it's, it's, I believe in that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. That was nice. Well, Lola, we're going to jump to you. Thanks so much. Um, so your first question, what is more important, improving touch points or removing pain points? <laughs> I'm going to go with improving touch points. Awesome. Okay. Do you want to tell me why? <laughs> <laughs> I think that removing pain points is all fine and good, but the gain points is where better opportunity lies. Awesome. Uh, what is one tool you could not live without in your job? 
some kind of collaborative whiteboarding tool. We use uh, Fig Jam. It's no Miro, but she's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, last one for you. So, if service design, journey management, and product management were a band, who would be playing the lead guitar? <laughs> Uh, all I can think of is the Oasis reunion. That's great. And thank you, Lola. So, Florian, you're next. Uh, in one sentence, what's one piece of advice you would give to people in your field to do well in their roles? Uh, leave their ego at the door. Mm -hmm. Whatever else said. Nice. Um, do journey management and product management compete as disciplines? Yes or no? No. Same question. If your job was a movie, what would it be? Everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. I was hoping it would come. That was awesome. You can tell. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> All right, Jason, you're up next. Uh, what's one trend in your job that you think would fade away? One trend? Yes. Ooh. One trend that will fade away. I can be hopeful that potentially uh, um, user stories or some, somewhere like teams will become anonymous or autonomous enough to where you're building the right things at the right time and um, you're you're not tracking the backlogs and burn downs. Wow. Uh, what is the same question? What is one thing you wish you could automate in your job? User stories. <laughs> 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 that makes sense. So, uh, so what's the crypto night to your role? Oh <laughs> people. <laughs> Overall, I think just uh, a lot of a lot of voices and a lot of noise. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, uh, Richard, no, last but not the least, uh, what is the most valuable business metric for you? And besides NPS. There's loads. I think coming well, is, is it effective for a, for a customer? Did they get the job done? Did they get the job that they need to do? Mm -hmm. uh, are there any industries that are more or less suited to using journey management as a methodology? I'd maybe, I'd maybe say, instead of maybe industries, it's maybe the size of the organization. Mm -hmm. So maybe startups or smaller companies that haven't got that same, that element of legacy involved, it's mm -hmm. easier and they're doing something probably is one thing, potentially as well. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, last question, if you wrote a book about your work life, what would the title be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, then always scrolling, maybe. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. That was amazing. Thank you, everyone. Uh